Here's Tucker's Gee. We got these, and I thought I'd go ahead and make this video to show you what I did to have to shorten this thing up. I mean, the sizing charts on these things, it, it kind of uses one size for really heavy people that are really tall is why they would be heavy. And then it has a size for like really short people as the short people is skinny or really long arms. So in order for us to get geese, since we do have a little bit of belly to us, it makes it to where we got to have really long arms. So we got to shorten this thing. I sit here and the important thing is to fold it up, find out exactly how much you need. And it was six inches too long on the feet and five inches too long on the arms. So this is how I figured that out as I just rolled them up and when you roll it up and get it as flat as possible, you can literally just take a tape measure and see how much you got to take off. And you only have to do one leg because more than likely, both legs are going to be the same length. And you don't want to have one shorter than the other. Then they would just be uneven as heck. So you just get a standard size. And then you have them take them off. And you roll the uh, gi inside out to where the outside is the main part you're looking at here. And then you roll up your arms and legs. Like right now I'm working on the pants. So I rolled up and I got the exact measurement that needed to come off. And since I have it rolled inside out, I can go ahead and make that to where the seam at the bottom of the gi pant leg is tucked up. And then it looks more professional. It can look like the actual factory stitch if you do it right. I'm not a professional at this. I just do it because I'm cheap and I don't want to pay somebody else to do it. So that's the reason I've learned to do all this stuff all these years. And this is just how I do it. So I roll it up and then I go ahead and put the pins in. Just keep it straightened out. And I do it to both sides. And make sure you count how many pins you put in, especially if you have kids, because you don't want to drop the pins on the floor. And when you get done with it and you unroll it, you can count the pins you take out of it and make sure you didn't lose any. And you do have to be careful with these pins because if you poke it through there and you got your finger on the other side, <laughs> you'll find that finger pretty fast. So here we go I'm doing the other side it's easiest to go ahead and do all the legs and pants at the at once and get it all ready and it it also helps if you measure front and back of both pant legs when you do it so you have a good even stitch because you don't want it all poly wonkus or whatever going throughout there and you got doubled up stitching and all that I just you try to get it as straight and even as possible so it looks like it did when you received it. It's just shorter. And me, myself, on the pant legs and the arms of the jacket or the top, I use six pins is all I need to go around it. After you get the pins in there, you go ahead and unroll it to where the outside, the appearance side, is the part that is showing. And here I go with the top. I go ahead and turn it inside out. And go ahead and do it to both sides. Then I do the cuff. And on the top part, it was only five inches. So I don't have to take off as much. And it can be kind of a headache to get it perfectly flat in there. You want it flat, flat, flat. You don't want to put it, uh, pin it up while it's on them. However, sometimes it's easier to go ahead and pin it up on them. 
a lot of the times what you can do is you can just turn the outfit inside out and then have them put it on and then roll it up and pin it while it's on them. And then all you got to do is take it off and put it on the sewing machine and sew it up. So it is easier to do it that way. I just like doing it this way, going ahead and taking it off and doing it with tape measure because it's more precise. If you're doing it when it's on them, sometimes you can get unlevel or not straight at all. Then there you go. I just pull it back right side out and put it away. Now I go ahead and get ready for the uh, sewing part of it. My sewing machine, I barely ever use this thing except for stuff like this. So I don't really have a bobbin spooled. So that's what I'm having to do right now. I'm putting a bobbin on my little brother. On my brother's sewing machine. I got this thing out. And got put it through there. It's just a little wheel. You stick the string through it. You wrap it around that thing on the top there. And then it comes back to this little uh, catch. And you pull it back. And then you push the pedal. And make sure you got it turned on. Then you can sit there and just watch it spool up like... And there you go. Okay. Then you take it off. And most sewing machines go ahead and string like this. You go over to one hook. And then you do like this little W pattern. It goes down and there's a little arm that comes up. You got to turn the uh, needle all the way up. And what that does is, or no, it's all the way down to where the thread feeder is all the way up. The thread feeder you want all the way up. I don't remember if the needle's all the way down or up, but you make it to where the thread feeder's all the way up. And this brother sewing machine, see that thing? You just put this thread through this little catch right there. And then you put it over there on that thing and pull it through. And you hook it on there and it threads the needle, man. Oh my God, that's one thing I love about this sewing machine. Uh, it's getting old and dirty and it's the rats have crapped on it before and all this stuff. But... It still works, so I put it to work. Then there's that bobbin I wound up. You gotta feed it through there. It, it's pretty easy. I don't know how, but you get it like this right here, and that needle will actually pull the thread through. And what it does is it catches the thread as it goes through the fabric. So you have two threads, one on each side, one coming through and one going through the little hoops and stuff on the other side. It's it's really complex scientific stuff. It'd be really hard for me to explain it all in my infinite wisdom. You know, I really don't know what I'm talking about, right? But anyways, and then you get that straight line by just going ahead and making sure the presser foot is at the edge of the fabric. Or if you don't want the line that close to the fabric, you can move it up, but just make sure you keep the same distance all the way around and go straight and try to keep it as even as possible when you go around so when you get with these jujitsu uh geese these seams on the top are ridiculous see the jujitsu gi it is really thick so for one they're really hot and for two they're really tough because uh, jiu-jitsu is a craft of submission and it's kind of like wrestling which you it's for close combat more or less but it does help you subdue and you know with the kids i like to think that it helps them build their confidence in a lot of ways and if they got to choke somebody out they can <laughs> that's pretty cool but I trust they won't use it for things like that. I just mainly use it for their confidence builder. But you go all the way around there, and if you want it to look really 
really professional you get this pulled up and as you can tell my sewing machine does all kinds of crap that i don't like it like bunches up the threads whenever you do the th the sewing part when you take off and when you end your stitch you got to do a reverse stitch so you just do it for like i do it for three to five stitches you keep going one way and then you hit the reverse stitch over the right of it and it makes it go backwards so it's like double stitching over where you just stitched and i get the even line by lining that thread up on the side of that presser foot which is what you pull down on the gi and if you do it just right you can actually get that to where it don't hang up on the seam right there so bad because you're going with the seam instead of against it which you know if i if i would have thought about it in the first place i would have probably done a better job at making sure that it didn't go against the seam because them seams man they can really mess you up because this is really thick material i mean it'll make it's like a potato sack it's crazy then at the end of the stitch you go backwards a little bit and then forwards and then you pull it up and now this is the pants see i got the or no wait um no this is still the top i think you can see i missed a lot of recording and there is a lot of video that goes with this. So I took a lot of it out to save some time. This video would have been like an hour long if I would have put everything in there. And it'd be a heck of a lot better if I had a cameraman. But, you know, I'm just doing this stuff for the hell of it. Just trying to put out a bunch of these videos before uh, the new year. Because this video, this channel will cease to be if I don't have a thousand subscribers by january or no i'll just put it this way i'm leaving until i have a thousand subscribers on this channel in january so let's say i don't have a thousand subscribers in january then i just leave and be gone for a while until i do get a thousand subscribers if i never get a thousand subscribers it's fine i'll be all right i ain't gonna cry about it i'm just doing this because i think i might be helping somebody or shoot all these other people doing these videos making all kinds of money getting rich off of it. it's crazy and i do all kinds of stuff i can fix electronics i can fix vehicles i can fix houses i can fix pretty much anything and youtube has a lot to do 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 with that uh if it wasn't for youtube i wouldn't be able to do hardly anything but back to the gi here. I don't know if you see what I'm doing there. After I get done with the stitch, I go ahead and make sure that there ain't a bunch of strings hanging off of it and stuff. Because when, if you make the double stitch, see so you go around it once and then you go over a little bit about the size of the side of the presser foot. And that gives you a perfect pattern for the next one. So as long as you use the presser foot as that guide for you, you can make it pretty even and make it look just like it did when they, it left the thing. Now, if you have a junk sewing machine like mine that hasn't been oiled or cleaned ever, I mean, I kind of wiped it off when I pulled it out for this video. But I don't want to ever oil it because I only use it like once a month, maybe, tops, if that. But, you know, all these geese come in and they're way, way too big. So, but at the same time, they're too small. So it's weird because mine's too small, but too big. The arms and legs are too long, but my belly, it's too big or too small. So... You know, I had to do this to all three of them, and I made this video because I kind of felt like I was being a professional about this time because, you know, that's eight stitches per uh, gi that you have to do, and 
So this was after 16 times of doing it, I was like, oh, man, I, I can do this over and over again and not have any kind of problems. But then again, I go through and do this, and you notice I cut out most of it. I, I was going to, like, show you how to do every little detail of it, but you can see I didn't really do a very good job of that. So at this point, I'm kind of just making a video for the heck of it to show you what I was up to today, I guess. Oh, and as I'm watching this back, doing this voiceover on this video, I'm like really squeamish because I seen like two or three times I almost like sewed my hand. It, it was scary. Luckily, knock on wood, I, I haven't sewn my hand yet. So I'll, I'll go ahead and knock on wood. <laughs> But after you get going pretty good, and especially on the pants, you can, like, speed up. There's really nothing to it. You just got to stay in a straight path and make sure your string don't get, like, hung up. And on those seams, it bunches up real bad. And on the bottom, the bobbin side of the string looks like crap a lot of the times if, if you're not uh, paying attention, and especially where you reverse stitch or go over the seams. So that's why you want to sew this way with the outward side of the gi on the outside instead of with the inside out, you know. And you want to have the freaking part that you are going to be shortening folded inside the gi so that the little lip don't come unraveled at the bottom and then your pants co start coming undone and stuff. That's the whole reason you hem your pants is so they don't start fraying down at the bottom. You just fold it up into the pants and the top and then you sew it around. You go around in the circle. You try to make it as straight as possible and... I use white on these because it's the thread that they use, so I wanted it to look like it was made that way. But it, it, it don't necessarily look like it, but it, it looks pretty good after it's all done. So I ain't going to complain. I, did a, I took a day and got all three of these done and, you know, made this video and fed the kids, took care of Ryder. We, we hung out for a little bit. It's... It's a whole handful being a stay-at-home dad. It, it's kind of fun, though. You get to raise your kids and get to see them every day. Sometimes they can be mad at you. Sometimes you're mad at them. They always drive you nuts, but, you know, that's all right. You drove your mom nuts, I'm sure, when you were little. I know I did. So I guess it's just what goes around and comes around. But... I ain't all, I ain't scared to whoop a little butt every once in a while, that's for sure. So, but yeah, I'm get, getting the stitches on there. The pants is 100% easier than the top. Because the top is just so long. And a lot of the times if the bobbin side starts to bunch up and you don't notice it, which going over the seam a lot of the times... It can, like, do a big skip stitch on the bottom, I guess. That's what I call it. I don't know if it's a skip stitch or what, but it's where the bobbin side and the needle side of the thread don't go through each other for some reason. And usually it has to do with a big bunch up of fabric. There's also when you're going through this, and, like, when you needle up the arms and the legs of the gi to be sewn... A lot of the times you just got to be careful that you don't like crease one piece of it because you have it doubled over and on the inside you could have it like folded in one spot whenever you put them needles in. So you got to watch for that too. You just want it as flat as possible when you go to do that. Look at me there. Man, I'm I'm like evil Knievel. I'm I'm going fast. Fucking freaking speedy Gonzalez going on here. Vroom, 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 vroom. 
And of course, when you're going through it, you, you want to twist your pants because, you know, you are going in a big circle around the pant leg. If you let it build up, it's just going to keep going and going and going. And then you're going to have all kinds of tension on the outside of the pants going up to the sewing machine to where it starts to make your straight line not so straight. I guess I could put it that way. That's kind of a pain in the butt, but it's all right. It's all good. And whenever you stop or you, like, mess with the presser foot on the sewing machine as you're sewing, you want to make sure that your uh, needle is all the way down. Like, sometimes you got to change direction. You can do that by going ahead and putting your needle down, pulling up your presser foot, and then turning your fabric whichever direction you need to go. But, of course, when you're doing a pant leg and an arm leg, you don't need to turn. But that's one way to do it. You see Ryder over there. He wants me to play with his, like, transformer. He ripped half of it off and threw it away. This right here is after I got it sewn. I go ahead and make the inside out again so I can take out all the needles and put them back in my pin cushion. And in this process, I, like, lost two needles that's why i told you make sure you count your needles because if i didn't know i lost them i wouldn't have been able to find them because they fell out of the fabric onto the floor but that's all right since i knew how many i needed or how many i had Ryder ain't gonna be swallowing them and harley ain't gonna be licking them and swallowing them and nobody's gonna be stepping on them because i knew exactly how many needles i had and it was kind of a trick to keep Ryder away from the pin cushion. He liked it. He thought it was a ball. And you got a big old ball full of needles. You don't really want your three-year-old running around with your pin cushion. You'd be calling him pinhead after a while. You know, I'm stuck in his fingers and stuff. After you get all the pins out of there, see, what... If you wanted to, some people actually sew at the top of the folded fabric all the way around to where if you don't cut it off like I do, you can re-lengthen the pant legs, make them long again to where they can use them as they get taller. But the reason I cut them off is because that's a good time to buy a new gi. I don't want them looking like trash after like a year or so they grow up like another foot you know it's just time to get another gi if they stick with it for that long they've earned a new gi so i go ahead and cut it off because as thick as the fabric is on these things that'd be like doubling over the fabric on your leg and especially when you're pulling up six inches of fabric to pull off or cut off so I go ahead and cut it off because it's already like wearing a coat. So, but the gi really does help because you have to have it in jujitsu because that's a lot of the moves and stuff are based on the gripping of the gi and all that. That's why it's so thick. You know, karate and them other ones that have the really thin gis, that's a lot different. This this has the gi that is made for grabbing and throwing. And, you know, you can actually take the fabric on this and suspend yourself with, like, a hook through the fabric on it. It's, it's just really, really strong material. You special order them. And another nice thing is you don't have to have a special gi from your uh, sensei or your whole thing you don't have to have the gi a special color or anything in our uh, small town scrappers so that that's pretty nice that's a definite benefit because i had to when they went to karate with saying martial arts there in ponca they had to have a particular white gi and it kept getting dirty so i got them blue gis i got a black gi so mine you know, my I I get mine really dirty. 
because I'm in the adults and we wrestle around a little bit more than the kids do. So, but after you get it sewn up and you get the extra fabric cut off of there, you go ahead and pop it back out just like that. Get all the extra string off of it that was all over the place when you were cutting it off and not throwing it in trash like you should because you're too lazy like me, you know. But that's pretty much it. Sorry it wasn't a better video. This is what it looks like when it's done. See how much shorter it was? Right here. Went way down on the arms. And the legs went a little bit high. They're supposed to be short, Does it work? though. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. How do I shorten jujitsu gi? Like, share, and subscribe for more.